Hello, we will be presenting on avenues for decreasing waste at Irving's Farm Fresh. The team that worked on this project consists of Alicia, Corbin, Rhythm, Damie, and Jenna. Okay, so we'll start with a quick outline. Our presentation will begin by introducing our sponsor and what they do. Then we will go into the project purpose, the goals the Irvings asked us to achieve. Next, we will detail the methods we use to accomplish our goals and of course the challenges we faced while doing so. The second half of the presentation will trans transition into our research results, the best two options available for sustainable packaging and the best two options for disposing of cardboard waste. We'll end with a conclusion that describes our deliverables and if we reached our project goals. Now we are going to introduce our project sponsor, Irving's Farm Fresh, a small family farm located near Round Hill, Alberta. The owners, Alan and Nicola, raise free range Berkshire pigs and process their meat in a butcher shop that has recently been built on their farm. Alan and Nicola are originally from the United Kingdom where pork is traditionally neither smoked nor full of garlic, thus encouraging them to start their own pork business. Their pork is currently being processed and used for supermarkets, restaurants, and grocery stores across Alberta. While the Irvings raise their pigs and process their pork, they do not butcher the pigs themselves. So these pigs arrive at Irving's butcher shop from the slaughterhouse in cardboard boxes lined with soft film plastic to prevent the meat juices from leaking out. About 100 cardboard boxes a week enter their farm, which is quite a lot. Like many other farms across Canada and the United States, the Irvings bring their plastic and cardboard to a landfill rather than recycling or repurposing them. Thus, our group's first project goal entails finding an alternative disposable place uh, that will recycle or repurpose their cardboard and plastic waste. Uh, our group's second project goal is to alter Irving's processing to better reflect their sustainability goals. The Irvings would like to change their plastic packaging so that it has a less detrimental impact on the environment, but this change would need to make their customers happy, reduce the impact on our earth, and make sense financially. And lastly, the Irvings informed us that many sustainable waste management and packaging options are not readily available or cost-effective in Alberta. So our third project goal is to present the Irvings with all of our research on the currently available options for their packaging and for recycling their waste in Alberta in hopes to help them make an informed business decision. To begin our project, group members researched and contacted companies to find alternatives for Irvings current waste management. This researching tactic was executed in three categorical efforts. The first avenue looked at ways to reduce cardboard and plastic use through producing renewable energy. To do this, we contacted companies that could create energy and fertilizer from waste from farm waste. Unfortunately, many companies were limited to only converting cardboard and organic material into energy, leaving out a plastic solution. We contacted experts to find ways of producing energy from soft plastic and find alternatives to reuse cardboard and plastic creatively. The second branch of research was determining if cardboard and plastic could be replaced by alternative biodegradable packaging. Online research and follow-up phone calls occurred to find products and companies that could replace Irving's current packaging process while maintaining shelf life, visual appeal, and economic profitability. Finally, research took place to determine if any locations in Camrose or the county would take the cardboard or plastic. Businesses within the Camrose city were contacted, contacted via email or cell phone to figure out if cardboard boxes were desired. Camrose County was also investigated for recycle depots or waste sites closer and more convenient to Irving's Farm Fresh. These disposal sites were found through the Camrose County website and were contacted through cell phone. All avenues of research were summarized into a table to show the product or the company's practicality for Irving's Farm Fresh. Costs, environmental effects, and customers' perspectives were taken into consideration when investigating the functionality of each avenue. Results that seemed ideal for Irving's Farm Fresh were further analyzed in a cost comparison between current and suggested options. The information in the cost comparison came from a combination of information from the sponsor and businesses who were, contact for, who were contacting for prices, time saved, and positive implications on the environment as a result of utilizing their product or services. We did have a few challenges to overcome over the course of our project. The first was that we as a group didn't have a lot of ex university experience in environmental or business studies. So we had to do some background research about the best sustainable technology and strategies to assist our sponsor. We also researched the positive and negative implications associated with making farms sustainable, including costs, labor, and environmental impact. 
Our sponsor's business is based on their pig farm with which we were also unfamiliar. So we had to do extra research to learn more about pig farms and the processes of making meat products. While we tried to contact several waste disposal and food packaging companies, we had difficulty making contact with them as many of them were outside of Alberta. For example, companies in Toronto, Germany, and China. We often had delays of one day or more between initiating contact and then hearing back from them. With the extensive research we did, we came up with several options that we could explore further. However, with all of this information, it was challenging to create a deliverable that was exhaustive and informative, yet still concise and convenient. Our sponsor was content with the type of plastic they currently use, but they were interested in finding a way to reduce the amount of plastic waste on their farm. Because the plastic is soft and it's contaminated, as opposed to hard, clean plastic, it was difficult to find a practical solution for reducing the plastic waste. So first are some of the options that we explored for reducing plastic waste. We explored two different companies that offer sustainable food packaging options, the first being Bio4Pack. Bio4Pack is a Germany-based company that offers different types of food packaging. The packaging we looked into was the polylactic acid or PLA trays. PLA is made from sugar beets, corn, and sugar cane, all of which can be recycled or composted. These would be paired with laminated plastic, also synthesized from PLA to store the meat. Irving's uses a range of sizes for, for their packaging, which Bio4Pack offers. By using sustainable packaging such as PLA trays, the amount of plastic used and thrown away by Irving's would be greatly reduced. However, purchasing and importing the trays would be more expensive, partially because of fossil fuels cost associated with the transportation of the packaging from Germany. Closer to Alberta is a Toronto-based company called Omeland Hospitality. They have sugarcane bagasse trays as well as cornstarch trays, both of which are biodegradable. Like Bio4Pack, Omeland also offers trays of many different sizes, which would suit the sizing needs of Irving's. It's possible that whether monetary or environmental, the costs would be less than those of Bio4Pack. The packaging from either company would be more sustainable and environmentally friendly in terms of waste. Irving's would also be able to maintain their strategy of engaging customer interest by allowing customers to clearly see their products because of the tra transparent film on top of the trays. However, the shelf life of Irving's products would be greatly reduced uh, with the use of trays and films as opposed to their current vacuum sealed plastic packaging. Packaging from either company would be more expensive than Irving's current packaging, and one must also account for the fact that both companies are out of province and, of course, Germany is outside of Canada. Since we have discussed ways to reduce plastic, we are now going to transition our efforts to using cardboard sustainably. Eco Growth Environmental, what is it? This company originates in Calgary and aims to redefine sustainability in the business world. Their goal is integrating machines to repurpose waste into renewable energy. And so how does it work? Looking at the picture from right to left is a system of appliances that break down waste and cardboard into renewable energy. The unit on the right is a dehydrator. Animal waste such as bones, fat, and meat remains, as well as human wastes, are thrown into the dehydrator to remove water and create a fluffy, fibrous, and combustible pulp. The middle unit is called the shredder, and its purpose is to break down cardboard boxes. The products of both units are then moved to the left unit called a boiler, which slowly burns the product for many applications such as heating water and home. So a cost comparison. We wanted to use Carolina's 2016 triple bottom line figure, which defines sustainability as the middle point between the environment, the economy, and society to determine the practicality of eco growth products. So environmentally, Irving's Farm Fresh currently disposes cardboard at a dump and sends animal waste to a recycling facility in Edmonton. By transferring to eco-growth, both waste would be repurposed for energy, lowering methane gas emissions in the process. From a social standpoint, Irving's Farm Fresh is currently focusing on raising pigs that are naturally raised with no antibiotics or hormones. Eco-growth can enable the Irvings to spread awareness about how farms can lower waste and become sustainable while still focusing on raising natural pigs. From an economical standpoint, Irving's Farm Fresh currently spends $2,052 disposing of cardboard and animal waste. 
transferring to eco growth would initially cost $150,000 with 108 years until payback. This is way too long and a lot higher than expected, yet payback can be dramatically reduced. Since Cameras County cannot dispose of waste at Centricam, the county could drop off cardboard and waste at Irving's Farm Fresh. If five to six farms dropped off the same amount of waste as Irving's, payback could be reduced to roughly 22 years. In addition, government grants are available for the Irvings to apply for, which would dramatically reduce the time for payback. Another promising option that we looked into for cardboard disposal was Kingman Transfer Site, which is one of the waste disposal sites available to the population in Kingman and Round Hill. This site just recently got their recycling bins back, so it's now a feasible option for Irvings to take their cardboard waste. Cardboard can be disposed of here at no cost and no matter how many times during the year. Um, another thing about Kingman is that it is located closer to Irvings than the landfill is at the moment, so it results in significant time savings. Um, it takes about half an hour to do a round trip from Kingsman transfer site compared to about two hours for the landfill. This option is also more cost effective in that it results in lower fuel cost and labor cost. And this option is also more sustainable in that the cardboards that are taken to Kingman transfer site are actually transferred to a recycling facility in Edmonton. Furthermore, there's also um, the benefit of keeping their investments saved that Irvings have already invested in their cardboard. It's such that they recently bought a trailer which they use to store uh, their flattened and stacked cardboard and that can still be justified in their business model. Now looking at Kingman as a promising option, we looked to compare the comparisons of the cost that is currently uh, taking place with the landfill compared to what it would result in Kingman transfer site. We looked at this through the three sustainability pillars. Uh, firstly, through environmental, we can see that cardboard uh, is pretty much wasted once it's taken to the landfill, whereas at Kingman's, it will be recycled. As for the economics uh, side point, we can see that it takes about um, 175 to $190 per year to dispose of cardboard, whereas at Kingman's, it's about 125 and these savings essentially come from fuel costs and labor costs, such as their employees save more time when they go to Kingman's. And from the societal point of view, um, Irving serve a very environmentally conscious customers base. So the fact that they might not be disposing of their cardboard in the most environmentally friendly way can actually be harmful to their brand. Therefore, using Kingman's, can, uh, they can actually advertise and raise awareness to their customer base about their environmentally friendly practices. Um, looking at all of this together, we can see that Kingman turns out to be the best option uh, compared to the alternate resources that we looked at and also their current option. So this is the site uh, that we would recommend for their cardboard disposal. Okay, so in conclusion, our goals in this project were to find an alternate but sustainable solution for Irving's cardboard and plastic waste to research an alternative for their plastic packaging and to present them with enough information to feel satisfied, making a more sustainable decision. As a group, we feel that we achieved these goals. Firstly, through the cost comparison section, we provide Irving's Farm Fresh with two options for their waste disposal. And we ultimately recommend that they choose to implement the Kingman transfer site option. Next, we provide two sustainable packaging options, Omland packaging and Bio 4 pack while addressing their limitations through the three pillars of sustainability, cost, environmental impact, and potential customer responses. Lastly, we provide our alternative avenues explored to inform the Irvings of all the research we found and that at the moment, they cannot sustainably discard or transfer their soft plastics. Nevertheless, the alternative avenues deliverable suggest companies and programs the Irvings should look out for in the next couple of years as recycling options change really quickly. So these are our references. Thanks for your time. And does anyone have any questions?